I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. Fine, fine, sir. Fine, sir. Uh, Ma'am Faiza? Yes, sir. Uh, will you please uh, take start? Okay, sir. I hope everyone can hear me. Yes. Hello, everyone. Very good evening to all of you. And I welcome you all for the webinar of Now I want to give you an introduction of PASS. Promote critical thinking and culture of scientific in academia of Pakistan and cross the world by means of conducting seminars, webinars, research workshops, and conferences. Today, today's webinar is also being organized as an attempt to achieve aims of a webinar with you, uh, with you all. That is, entire activity will be engaged for uh, for about one hour and ten minutes. That will include four sessions. That is, talk of the respected speaker. Question answer uh, The purpose of the webinar is that must be embedded in the goal of education from down to higher level of education. This will aim to produce the learners who could be able to think deeply and logically to obtain and evaluate evidence in an organized way to make sense of the world and think about how things have become the way they are. However, producing such practical learners to think we are In today webinar, there should be two. I would like to speak. And, and uh, national consultants. Training and consulting base in the Philippines. Currently, a staff consultant at the Asian Development uh, for Education. Ma'am Faiza, kindly adjust your mic. Yeah, we can't hear.
There is no voice. Hello, oh, Faisal, can you please hand over my to Professor? I think uh, at the end of Professor Richard, uh, voice is okay and perfect. And on your side, uh, voice is not uh, audible. So my suggestion is uh, you may hand over my directly to Professor Richard. Okay. Good afternoon uh, to all of you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to all of you, and thank you very much for this invitation. And um, so, uh, good day and good afternoon, and assalamu alaikum to all of you. My name is uh, Dr. Richard Gonzalez, and I am from the Philippines. Uh, I am at present a staff consultant of the Asian Development Bank and chief executive advisor of InnoChains International Consultants. Formerly, I was an associate professor of psychology and education at De La Salle University, Manila, and um, a professorial lecturer of psychology and statistics at the University of Santo Tomas, also in Manila. I was also a senior education specialist at the World Bank before I came back to the Philippines. Again, I thank Professor Dr. Razid for this kind invitation. We are virtual friends in LinkedIn and we have been sharing some events before he invited me to grace your occasion. Again, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Razid. For today, I would like to share my thoughts and experiences and have conversation with you on three interesting questions related and how we critically, how we think critically and creatively in order to achieve academic success. First, I would like to share what every student needs to have to achieve academic success. Sometimes we tend to forget this basic question when we get into our classroom. Today, we will revisit and allow ourselves as well to realize that we also have to have these basic needs. Second, I will share some ideas on how we prepare our students to think critically and creatively. Should be how, how, what, what does every, every student need to achieve? Prescribe a single pill, okay? But I will attempt to share some tips and tools that we might be able to use in our classroom. Lastly, I will end my sharing by letting us realize the importance and benefits of having critical thinking skills, especially in this 21st century era where everyone is joining the bandwagon of digital learning, artificial intelligence, and disrupted technologies. So let's start our conversation with these three important points we should realize that there is no perfect formula for academic success. There is no perfect lesson, unit, or school any more than can be perfect song, flavor, scent of perfume, and even shade of color like the color of your flag, green. Every student is different. This is a fact that we take it for granted. Every single smart, intelligent, diligent, enthusiastic, attentive, 
bully, aggressive, rich and poor, tall and small human being that walks into our classroom or lugs, lugs in into our virtual classes on a daily basis has their own story, one full of promise, heart attack or complexity. And this is not just a rhetoric, it's true and it matters. So when we talk of support, of supporting students to achieve academic success, every student has that goal, but each student comes with a specific approach and strategy to achieve it. However, what is universal in our attempt to design learning experiences, learning experiences, schools, curriculum, technology, and other bits of pieces of education and academic success, is it possible that we forget to miss some obvious factors that academic success, factors that every single student needs? So today I will share some of the fundamental things that every student needs. This is not of course encompassing, there could be more, but it is good for us to realize and reflect on them. I am wondering whether uh, my PowerPoint, can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, sir. You see my PowerPoint? No, 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 no screen. No screen. Okay. Uh, Really? Okay. Uh, because I would like to share my PowerPoint. Uh, okay. It was there before. Uh, but then I think I was disabled to share my, my screen. Okay, let me Okay, sorry. Um Can you uh No, uh I was disabled to share my screen. Uh, Faiza, kindly allow Mr. Speaker, enable him to share his screen. Please. Uh, okay. Um, I allow, I allow him, but no screen. Okay, uh, Faiza, uh, go to the multiple screen sharing uh, uh, item. And in this way you can do this uh, task uh, and uh, you can share yeah yeah multiple sharing in the sharing screen button okay yeah 
now at my end it's okay and uh, now perfect yeah multiple screen sharing okay now uh, professor Richard, you may try and uh, under the screen there is a button share screen along with chat box and now you can try it hopefully now you can share your screen Will I be allowed to share my screen? Yeah, yeah. Now you can do, Professor Richard, it's okay. Okay, perfect, thank you, it's okay. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, uh, so um, sorry for the interruption. Sometimes um, uh, we, we have to do that. Okay, so um, I start, I just okay. Our start our conversation, as I have said, that uh, about on that every student is different. Every student has his own story to share, and every student wants to succeed in school. Every student needs self-knowledge. Every student needs inspiring models. Here, models offer ideas and they can act as a scaffolding and enlighten the possible possibility and provide pathway and give students something to anchor their thinking when everything else seems abstract and very academic. The more creative, authentic, inspiring, and diverse, the better the, ch the chance every student can reach. Every student needs to know how to learn, learning strategies, and they need to know the strategies as well or better than the content. And they need ones that make sense to them, they understand and can grow into, don't tell them to use analogies because research says so. They have their own way of learning. They have their own way of thinking. As part, this is both the ability and tendency to think critically and creatively. Next, every student needs feedback, not, not judgment. The feedback we give to every student helps and acts as guidance to them. It may be corrective, but it, it's comforting. When we give feedback, let's avoid starting it, stating it as a judgment because judgment is personal and emotional and it hurts. So we tell our students, you won't always get this part perfect, but if you can at least try to hear yourself and know the difference, you're better of than those who would be otherwise. We often can tell how learning feedback sounds no matter how we mean it to sound. Also, every student needs creative, creative spaces or chance okay, to share or to, to think of, of their own ideas. Students need physical and psychological space. This could be physical, digital, alone in a group with apps, robotics, paint process, okay, makes learning or academic self-directed or outcomes based. Creativity isn't something that's added on. It is an honoring and of a basic human need 
for self-expression and self-direction. Hence, we need to encourage its students to find its best learning space and identify the tools to make them creative and think critically. Next, every student needs ideas or chance to share their own idea. We should bear in mind that our students are infinitely more clever than the design of most school and curriculum seems to suggest they are, but they're still growing with widely varying back backgrounds of knowledge and schema. More often than not, our students need ideas and that's the all need, an idea and for you to get out of the way. Allow our students to share the ideas. Each student may have unique, brilliant ideas. Of course, some students may have obnoxious or ridiculous ideas, but they are worth reflecting on. Every student needs a reason. It is important that we listen to our students. Their reasons may not be acceptable to us, but if no one is really truly listening, barring exceptional natural ambition, why bother? Every student needs a purpose, a reason to what they do. Also, every student needs a champion. And we also need champion. We also need champion. As earlier shared, students need inspiring models or modeling. Along with this, every student needs a champion, someone to believe in them when their own conviction falters. They need somebody to provide them reassurance and confirmation. They need somebody to affirm them and their ideas. They need somebody to stand for them and they can depend on. Every, need, every student needs a chance to practice or a time to practice, time, uh, a chance, uh, a time to practice. Every student needs to be active. They want to explore, discover, and most of all, practice and enhance their skills, whether it's cognitive, physical, even emotional and digital skills. And not only practice, but with a variety of support, none, a little, and a lot, with a variety of collaborators, with or without technology, with or without audience, with or without prescription and instruction, and both ends, but still within their zone of proximal development. Every student needs to play. Play is a good ingredient for students' development, adjustment, and learning. In fact, lots of students learn better through play because their mental and physical skills are utilized. Students are not wanting with ideas and energy, with collaboration partners, with apps, with digital media, with networks, and with their own thinking, with possibility of with models, they can play okay, continuously or unceasingly. Giving them time to play allows them also to learn to develop their critical and uh, creating thoughts. Every student needs a sense of agency and a choice or self-efficacy. This once, bit, once a bit of challenge because it's not a teacher action, but an outcome from a bunch of factors that we as teachers may have nothing to do with, with, it, with it. But without the belief that they can, which often is preceded by complicated notions of self-worth, everything else is less. As we all know, self-efficacy refers to individual's belief, belief of his or her capacity to execute behaviors necessary to produce a specific performance. Okay, we learned that from Bandura, okay? 
Effic self-efficacy reflects confidence in the ability to exert control over one's motivation, behavior, and social environment. <laughs> Lastly, every student needs hope, a sense that they have future and, and some degree of agency and affection in choosing how that future might work for them. All these are important for every single student to have positively in order to succeed inside and outside classroom or any learning environment. Recognizing the basic needs of students will help us understand them and prepare them to become creative and critical thinkers. So how do we prepare them? Teachers can help students become 21st century problem solvers by introducing them a broad range of thinking and creating tools. If you doubt that we live in a world of accelerating change, just consider the everyday life experience of millions, uh, just consider the everyday life experiences of millions of students today. They can view live images from every corner of the world and talk with or exchange with video images with other students who live many zones away. Today, students have more technology in their classroom, in many cases and in their backpacks than existed in the workplaces or schools of their parents 20 years ago. Students will study subjects that were unknown when their teachers and parents were students, and they were, may well enter careers that do not even exist today. In contrast, with most of their parents, more of today's students will routinely come into contact with other people of diverse backgrounds and experiences. They grow in to interact, collaborate, compete with others around the globe. In short, students now have become global citizens with boundless learning environment. So these are the situations helping them to become critical, creative thinkers. And this is the second part of our discussion today. Okay, so what is critical thinking? Okay, uh, I, I put here in red mark the, the definition of Ennis because Ennis was the first one who introduced, okay, who gave a very broad okay, and very robust definition of critical thinking, okay? Ennis defines critical thinking as a reasonable reflecting thinking, focus on deciding what to believe or do. Critical thinking in involves examining possibilities carefully, fairly, and constructively focusing on one's thoughts and action by first organizing and analyzing possibilities, defining and developing the most promising possibilities, and prioritizing ranking and options and choosing certain, um, certain option. A variety of skills are thought while learning about critical, critical thinking. This involves any kind of circumstances that requires planning, analysis, and reflection. So generally, in order to carry out critical thinking process effectively, a student needs to employ both abilities and dispositions as two major components of critical thinking. And this is what Andis has been exposing okay, since uh, 1987. Critical thinking is skills which lets you consider things from fresh perspective and different angles. It's an inventive thought process which results in surprising conclusion 
in new ways of doing things. That's creative thinking. Creative thinking means okay, can be aided by brainstorming or lateral thinking or to generate new ideas. In other words, critical thinking means thinking outside the box. Okay. If you ask a student to draw a house, okay, he may not draw his own house, but come out with a new okay, perspective of what could be a modern house is, comfortable house is, and a functional house is. So creative thinking is the ability to consider something in a new way. It might be new approach to a problem, a resolution to a conflict between students and teachers, or a new result from idea set, a data set. Employers okay, or teachers in schools want their students who can think creatively and bring new perspective okay, in the school setting. And this is true also in um, the in, in industrial setting. Okay? Employers in all industries okay, want employees who can think creatively and bring new perspective in their workplaces. So creative thinking means, as I have said, it's thinking outside the box. Often creativity involves lateral thinking, which is the ability to perceive patterns that are not obvious. Of course, that's the cognitive and neurological definition of creative, uh, creative thinking. Creative thinking might mean devising new ways to carry out tasks, okay? solve problems and meet challenges. And, the, and these are the things that we want to see in our students. We want them to see how our students will carry out tasks, solve problems and meet challenges in new ways or in new perspective. It means bringing the fresh and sometimes untraditional and orthodox perspective of their studies. This way of thinking can help teachers and even co-students or peers in an organization or in school more productive, okay? These are the top creative thinking skills, analytical, open-minded, problem-solving, organization, and communication. Creative thinking is expressed in several ways. Analytical, ability to analyze things first. Before thinking creatively or about something, a student must be able to understand it. This requires the ability to examine things carefully to know what they mean. Whether you are looking at a, te at a text, a data set, a lesson plan or an equation, you need to be able to analyze first. And this is always the basic uh, skill that we want our students to have, okay? It's not only to know, which is the knowledge and comprehension, okay? But they should be over, they should be able to go beyond higher order thinking, thinking skills, which is to have that ability to analyze ability for analysis, okay? Open-mindedness is also a creative thinking skill, thinking things no one else has considered before, okay? Meaning you want to, you know, uh, like we want inventors, we want innovators. So this is a characteristic of a creative thinker. To think creatively, you set aside assumption or biases that you have. Okay, and look at things in a completely in a new way. By coming to a problem with an open mind, you allow yourself the chance to think creatively. Again, my example is you ask a student to build or to, to draw his or her future house. So in this way, okay, the students, you should encourage your students to be open-minded, okay? That they should come out 
with an open mind with a new perspective so that they are they they will be they will have a chance to think critically third problem solving ability to solve an important issue <clears throat> teachers want creative students who will help them to solve academic and lesson related issues when faced with a problem consider ways you can solve it before asking for help if you need an input of, of a teacher or a principal suggest solutions rather than rather than just presenting problems you need to organize okay you need to structure your plan of action with clear goals and deadline and that's part of creative thinking and you should be able part of uh top creative thinking skills requires you to have a strong written and oral skills and ability to listen and ask the right question in fact some teachers do not just uh, appreciate the skills of their students by simply uh, answering questions okay when we when teachers encourage their students to ask questions then they are encouraging their students to think critically and creatively critical thinking okay both critical thinking and creative thinking involves generating many possibilities as i've said examining possibilities that critical thinking and generating possibilities is okay creativity <clears throat> excuse me critical thinking is one of the most important okay uh, critical and creative thinking are the most important academic skills that teach students to ask and reflect on their own understanding and knowledge about the information that have that has been presented to them Critical thinking is especially important for students that have been given assignment and have to perform deep research on a given topic. It is also, it also eventually helps them in the workplace, okay, in the future. In simple words, critical thinking, critical thinking is just the ability to understand things and questioning the probable, I don't know what's, how this is happening. <laughs> okay, uh, the lines, um, probable results of action. Okay, and um, here are some key points that reflect critiquing, critical thinking importance, okay? It is a domain general skill. It improves presentation, expertise, and knowledge. Critical thinking encourages creativity. It elevates autonomous learning, which we all want to encourage, like self-efficacy. Critical thinking helps improve academic achievement, okay, proper emotional call, and learning to work with a team. Okay. So now let's focus on habits of the mind for focusing ideas, okay? And there are guidelines to follow, okay? We use affirmative judgment when focusing their thinking, productive thinkers examine options carefully but constructively, placing more emphasis on screening, supporting, and selecting options than criticizing them. Another guideline when we try to focus on ideas is be, be deliberate, okay? Effective focusing takes into consideration the purpose of focusing. It is to select single solu solution, to rank, order, and pr pr prioritize several uh, of options, to examine ideas carefully with uh, very detailed criteria, and to create a sequence of the steps of action. Each of these purposes might be best served by specific 
focusing tool, which I will be sharing you uh, later on. Consider novelty, okay? If you state, if a stated goal is to find novel or original solution or response, then it is important to focus deliberately on that dimension when evaluating possible solution and not simply to fall back on the easiest and most familiar option within the list. And lastly, it is important that you stay on course. When focusing, it is important to keep the goals and purposes of the task clearly in sight to ensure that you evaluate the option in relation to their re relevance and importance uh, for the goal. Next, in terms of creating ideas, okay, uh, there are also four guidelines that we need to uh, we, we need to remember. One, okay, here is when we are generating options, productive thinkers separate generating from judgment, okay? We need to defer our judgment. Second, okay, more options a person or group generates, okay, the more options they generate, the greater the likelihood that at least some of these possibilities will be intriguing and potentially useful and new idea. Third, Encourage possibilities, even possibilities that seem wild and silly or ridiculous might serve as a springboard for someone to make an original and powerful new connection. And fourth, it is often possible to increase the quantity and quality of options by building one of, of, uh, of on the thinking of others or by seeing new combinations that may be stronger than any of their parts. Meaning to say, look at the combinations. Right? That's why, you know, this is, this is possible. A is possible, B is possible. But if you combine A and B, it's another possibility. And uh, probably one of the best tool to, uh, for generating ideas is that we can use in our classroom is brainstorming because brainstorming is probably the most widely known generating tool but often the most misunderstood and misused tool as well many people use the term brainstorming as synonymous synonymous to generating conversation discussion or exchange of view it is more accurate however to view brainstorming as a specific tool in which a person or a group follows four guidelines described above, which is you defer judgment, you see quantity, we encourage our possibilities and look for combinations to search for many possible responses on open-ended tasks or questions. So teachers can incorporate instruction in creative and critical thinking into curriculum in a number of ways, either singly or in combination. I recommend that maybe may, uh, that may um, uh, maybe teachers to follow. Teachers may follow several some of the guidelines that I, I will share. Okay, here um, introduce tools directly using engaging open-minded questions from everyday life. Provide opportunities to apply. You know, you allow the students to apply the tools in lessons or activities related to specific content. Be purposeful or methodical about applying tools and be cautious of presenting too much newness at once, okay? You know, uh, students, need, need, uh, students need to swallow, okay? Giving them too much okay, new ideas may not be helping them but rather will just only confuse them. Okay, what I will share is a, a very common creative problem solving framework. Okay, and um, which is the first, that, okay, wherein 
there are major stages in a problem solving. Okay, one is understanding the challenge. Okay, second, you generate ideas and preparing for action. And under understanding the challenge, okay, okay, there are three stages. Okay, one is constructing opportunities. Okay, generate possible and exploring the data and framing the problem. We need to consider sometimes we cannot solve our problem because basically, okay, we do not understand, okay, what the problem really is. In terms of generating ideas, fake, okay, it's about coming up with different ideas, ideas even more developmental or exploratory, okay? Developmental ideas are ideas for incremental improvements, improvements for existing structures or system, ideas fitting within the existing system, and ideas that are quick to implement. Improvement ideas are ideas for more radical changes, creating new structures, ideas for solution disrupting existing system, and ideas that take longer to implement. And we need to consider this. And some tools could be used as focusing tool, like you know, selecting hints, okay, uh, clustering, and so on. The third aspect is preparing for action. And there are two phases of this, okay? One is generating phase. Generate many varied unusual criteria that you will use in the focusing stage to examine the ideas. Identifying critical sources of assistance and resistance to answer the question, who, what, where, when, and why. And lastly, the focusing phase, organizing, evaluating, prioritizing, strengthening, promising ideas. Formulate a specific plan for action to answer the question, who will do what, but what, by when. Okay, uh, I am sharing you uh, this problem solvers basic tool, okay? And, um, you know, at the Center for Creative Learning, they have developed a creative problem solvers basic toolbox of generating and focusing tools and it's summarized here, okay? Uh, you, you can, uh, you can uh, Google it later on and um, it's, 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 it's very helpful, okay? Another um, CPS model or creative problem solving uh, framework that I will share is a way of solving problems or identify opportunities when conventional thinking has failed because it encourages you to find fresh perspective, perspective and come out with innovative solutions so that you can formulate a plan to overcome the obstacles and reach your goal, okay? And here is a model. And of course, uh, um, for, for, for uh, researchers, this is taken from Alex Osborne and uh, Sid Pernas, okay? Uh, and it was, uh, they are both the founder of Creative Education Foundation and they first developed this creative problem solving in the early 1940s, along with the term brainstorming. So what is this all about? Okay, it, uh, it has okay, four, okay, um, it has four phases. You need to clarify, you need to come out with uh, idea or ideate, and you need to develop and uh, implement. That's how simple the CPS model is. But of course, uh, you can further okay, look at the works of Alex Osborne and Sid Pernas of the Creative Education Foundation, which you can easily Google. So what are the core principles of creative problem solving? Okay, Divergent and convergent thinking must be ba balanced. Okay. When we mean, okay, the key creativity, the key to creativity is learning how to identify the balance 
of divergent and convergent thinking, which can be done separately and knowing when to practice each one. You ask questions, you ask pro problems as questions. When you rephrase a problem and challenge as open-ended question with multiple possibilities, it is easier to come up with a solution. Okay, it is always important that when we do creative thinking and, uh, and critical thinking, it is always important, you know, and, and, and I, I would like to focus, to always defer or suspend judgment. Okay, as Alice Oxborn learned from his work brainstorming, judging solution early tends to shut down idea generation. Okay, and lastly, focus on yes and rather than no, but. Language matters when you're generating information and ideas. Yes and yes and encourages people to expand their thoughts, which is necessarily um, ne necessary during certain stages of the creative problem solving process. Using the word, but, and preceded by either yes or no, ends conversation and often negates what come before you. Okay, so how do we use this tool? Okay, uh, I wish I could. Uh, uh, okay, how do we use this tool? One is when you clarify. Okay, first you have to explore the vision. The vision you have to know the goal. Okay, you gather data, you formulate question. When you ideate, or you know, when you come out with ideas, you need to explore ideas generate ideas that answer the challenge, the question you identified in step one. It can be tempting to consider solutions that you've tried before, as our minds tend to return to habitual thinking patterns that stop us from producing new ideas. However, this is a chance for us to use our creativity, okay? If you go back to the habit of solving your own problem, okay, uh, it worked before, so it should work again, okay? And so you're already shutting down opportunities for new ways to explore possibilities. When we develop, this is convergent states of CPS or creative problem solving, where you begin to focus on evaluating on, on all of your possible options and come out with solution. Analyze whether potential solutions meet your needs and criteria and decide whether you can implement them successfully or not. Because the last stage of CPS is implementation. And because once you have chosen the best solution, it's time to develop the plan of action. So how do we prepare our students? By helping students to learn and apply attitudes and practical tools of effective problem solving. How will we prepare students for changing world given the tools we learn? By helping students learn and apply the attitudes of, and practical tools of effective problems, problem solvers, teachers can enhance students' learning in powerful ways that extend beyond memorization and recall. Okay, that's our idea, okay? We cannot expect our students to be creative and critical thinkers if we do not go beyond memoriza memoriza memorization and recall. If we always ask a question what, okay, or simply recall question. Even when teachers are compelled to, play, to place great emphasis on basic learning and doing well on a standardized test, indeed, particularly at such time, it remains important to balance 
the emphasis between process and content in teaching and learning. Students who are competent in not only the basic content areas, but also the basic basics of productive and creative thinking will be lifelong learners, knowledge creators and problem solvers who can live and work effectively in a world of constant change. So what are the quick tips how to improve critical thinking? Okay. I would end my presentation conversation with, the, with this question. Okay, uh, here are some effective ways that can help improving critical questions. Identify a topic in an objective way, okay? Set aside, as I have said, set aside your judgments, your, your personal uh, biases, okay, uh, and so on. And be inquisitive and do not hesitate to ask questions. It is important, okay, to encourage students to discuss with their peers. Okay, and it's important for them to read, read, and read more, and always record your conversation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, what are the key takeaways? I will end my sharing with these final thoughts. A critical and creative thinker a self-awareness to know the difference between rational thought based on careful observation and emotional resp response based on personal biases. So if students use emotional responses and based on their personal biases, it's difficult for them to develop critical and creative thinking. Okay, emotion is the enemy of reason. Okay, if we are very right, we cannot make we cannot make a very good decision if we are enraged or uh, we are angry or are sleepy or we are very sad or we are very happy. Okay, because our um, the emotion is considered the enemy of our reason. By understanding. Your own perspective, you can consider the perspective of others and come to a conclusion based on fact and not on feelings. Ultimately, critical and creative thinker, thinking, uh, thinking skills help you to better understand the experiences and views of others, enhancing their ability to work with different people. With the thoughts, I would like to end my sharing. I would be happy to have further conversation with you. I may not be able to answer your questions thoroughly, but I believe your questions might trigger your critical and creative minds. Again, thank you very much. Good day. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you. Dear sir, for your impressive talk, and now the session is open for question and answer. And I will request the participants of either chat box option or raise hand for questions or sharing comments. I think. Uh... Sir Jagdesh Kumar is raising his hand, so probably we can unmute him. Yes, In moderation, I am just able to ask first question. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, it's it's choppy. It's on and off. Uh, 
after being a uh, motivation i take liberty to ask first question yeah pro probably i will i will uh respond to this first question to uh <laughs> raised by um um mr rashid uh mogal okay he said that rhetorical techniques can be manipulative and coercive and their uh, use should be avoided by those who aspire to think critically and persuasive by reason. But how could we avoid these rhetorics who persuade us to believe through power of their words? Okay. Now, uh, this, okay, uh, this is a very uh, interesting question and at the same time quite critical. Okay, because sometimes, okay, the rhetorics that our parents, okay, uh, we all know, like uh, we have a strong belief that our parents would always give the best reason, the best decision, and so we follow them, okay. Uh, however, okay, there are also instances, okay, where we need to provide those who have powerful persuasion okay of our uh of our uh of our ideas okay uh to make it more uh more concrete okay when a teacher thinks he or she is a law in class that means she is not or he is not allowing a student to ask a question or to even Okay, uh, disagree uh, with his ideas, with his belief, or with his explanation. Okay, um, then uh, it becomes a problem in terms of uh, developing creativeness in students. Okay, while well, in fact, because when we insist on our personal beliefs, okay, on our personal uh, uh, convictions, okay, then we lost the opportunity to allow our students to be creative and critical thinkers. In other words, okay, uh, when, when we are teaching, uh, when we are developing critical mindedness, critical thinking, as well as creative thinking, we set aside, okay, we step aside okay, uh, with our beliefs and emotions and our, okay, and, 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 and probably even uh, the way, uh, the, our way of life. Because when we do that, okay, when we do that, uh, we will have, okay, we will have our own, okay, uh, uh, we will not be able to uh, encourage creativity and critical thinking, think, uh, th critical thoughts among our students. Yes. Uh, the other question is, uh, would you shed light on analytical thinking? Is it, is it comes from after uh, critical thinking? Yes. Um, being analytical is a basic ingredient or basic skill that uh, a student should have, uh, a critical. Like, you cannot develop critical thinking unless the student okay the students do not have the ability to analyze if we are just focusing as i have said on recall and understanding and partly probably an application if you are are looking at the bloom's taxonomy of objectives you can never develop critical thinking and so even in the hierarchy of uh, Bloom's taxonomy uh, adjective, okay, before you can create, okay, which is now the, the, the revised Bloom's, okay, you, before you can evaluate, evaluation is the part of where you, a student, will show his critical thoughts, being critical thinking, and being able to create is, uh, which is the highest now, is the ability. So meaning to say like, if you do not have the skill, the analytical skill, it is difficult for you 
to become creative and critical thinker. Anything more? Uh, I, I hope I, I, I made that clear, right? It's basic, like it's basic in Bloom's taxonomy and in, in, in our, uh, in, in developing our, um, our, our uh, learning objectives that you cannot, you cannot, you know, you cannot develop the evaluative skills, which, you know, wherein the students have to be critical about it, come out with many, many possibilities and critical and creative students if the student does not possess analytical skills. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're you're welcome. Uh, anything more? <laughs> How would you distinguish argumentative from non-argumentative persuasion? Okay. Argumentative simply argumentative is you know uh, you just talk and talk and talk without thinking, while argumentative persuasion, okay, when you argue, you present your ideas and you present options, okay. It is only when you present options and argue with options that the person you are trying to convince or persuade will be able to persuade it, to get persuaded, okay? If you just say, no, 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 and without any, you know, uh, without giving them options or al allowing them to generate their own ideas and focus their ideas, okay, that is not argumentative persuasion, okay? In argumentative persuasion, you can only persuade a person okay by presenting him or her options or choices okay so that he can make critical decisions of course uh, when you persuade when you present your options you have to back up with some observation okay what is your take on shock theory that is to introduce students with such idea that goes against their previously held belief, which shock them for a while, but open up new avenues for thinking. Okay. The, the, the idea of shock theory is not to threaten or to, um, especially uh, when you're teaching values, okay? Uh, or even let's say, um, uh, and, and even science. Here, when you give them a theory, for example, that that that's entirely uh, that's entirely uh, uh, does not come from their long-held belief, that will really create a shock or what we call uh, 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 what, uh, a shock on the part of the students. When we say, for example, like students have learned about the law of evolution okay okay or in 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 religion we believe that uh you know we were created by god okay but then uh you come out with this and then you teach them the the law of evolution that could be a shocking to a child or to students who have held a long long uh, held belief that it was simply created by, by, by God. And so that's, there's a conflict between science and religion. And so a teacher should be able to present such situation, what is science, what the science says, and what religion says, or what culture, what culture says. Definitely, yeah. 
Can critical and creative thinking help us avoid rhetorical ploys and logical fallacies in our discussion? Yes, definitely. And that's the reason why, as I have said, you, you should always allow your students to generate ideas and possibilities. Okay. And um, of course, when, when you come out with, as I have said, students, you encourage your students to share the ideas. Okay. Whether it's wrong, obnoxious, unorthodox, and probably it could be a fallacy. Okay. But even if they come out with a fallacy, whether it's logical fallacy or not, if you encourage them to explain and present their, their perspective, it could be their way, okay? It, it could create, okay? Creativity as well as uh, critical thinking uh, ability in them. So when students come out with a, very uh with, with something that uh out of the blue you know uh like and and probably the, the even the teacher or the classmate will laugh at him okay but if you ask that the students if you encourage that the students to explain farther why such idea came out of his mind then he may have some explanation as i have said Allow the students to create idea and a chance to express their ideas. How can we inspire uneducated people? Okay, yeah. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. How can we inspire to uneducated people as he can understand and come out with a bad situation? Okay. Uh, I, I don't know uh, how, how to put this in context. Like uh, probably uh, how can you probably let, let's, let, let's make a situation, okay? How can, you know, how can a very poor person experience being devastated by an earthquake right of course uh you know um that's very uh heartening shocking experience and and so how do you still inspire that person okay um uh, you start by but but you start by saying that you know you you may come out with we may start explaining from the point of view of science okay from the point of view of preparedness and from the point of view of even 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 religion for that matter or or values education for that matter okay because it is important for them to understand and be critical and be creative when it comes to even uh, managing disasters, okay? Because, uh, you know, uh, indigents who are devastated by an earthquake may not understand that there is such thing as uh, disaster preparedness. But if we allow them to understand what that disasters are natural, and so they should be prepared, and there should be there they, they they should be uh they they should be ready when whenever the artists is you know these are uh for, when for for they should re be ready for natural calamities then they will be other they will be able to understand it how important to understand the structure of power in order to become critical thinkers okay yeah we all know that even us teachers, okay, nobody has the monopoly of ideas, okay? As I have said, that's why I started with the needs, basic needs of students, because sometimes the reason why we teachers are not able to succeed 
in 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 uh, in encouraging or in teaching students to become creative and critical thinkers is that we forget that 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 their basic needs that they need to play they need to have to uh share the ideas that that they have self knowledge okay and uh, and then uh but at the same time they need scaffolding they need models and so um when when this comes out you know um uh what, okay uh, i i don't want to to talk on politics here but sometimes this happens okay in in the pacific where i i work for quite a long time okay they have chieftains in their villages who are considered the law of the village i think this is similar to to this question and so if there are the law of the of the village okay nobody can disagree with them okay uh, or what they suggest okay or what they think is always the best but as i've said okay nobody has the monopoly of idea nobody has the monopoly of uh okay uh of, of bright ideas and so here sometimes uh structure institutions sometimes are the only are, are also sources or, or also the reasons why students or even teachers do not develop creativeness and um critical thing uh, critical critical thinking when we have a very powerful principal who does not even allow teachers to to share the ideas okay definitely no new opportunities no new options will come out from the teachers because uh you know you've got a very powerful person and institutions okay you are dealing with i hope i answered that question uh jagdes mr jagdes yeah sometimes uh the power that we have if we are a teacher the power that we have in a in a in in the classroom more often than not is the reason why our students cannot develop their creativity and critical thinking skills. Thank you, Dr. Richard. And now I will invite President Pass to say a word of thanks at the end. President Pass, please. Uh, thank you very much, Al. Uh, so far as uh, Pass is concerned, it has been uh, doing a lot in order to create critical thinking in uh, students as well as it provides uh, different forums to teachers to develop their critical thinking faculty. Uh, today's uh, speaker, uh, I'm very thankful on behalf of FAS and all my colleagues and all my students. We are very much thankful to Dr. Richard for providing a lot of knowledge related with critical thinking and uh, critically, thinking critically and creatively. Uh, so far as uh, my, uh, one of my concern is that uh, uh, living in a society that is a conservative society, sometimes students get it. Because one of the factors in so you are a society not... like us is the factor of fear. So it is one of the very Hello. 
lost. <laughs> I uh, think we lost. I think he has a voice issue. To provide conducive environment to students that they go, they must think beyond fear. So again, I would like to say thank to Dr. Richard, and we have got a lot uh, different aspects of critical thinking and uh, creatively thinking. Uh, I would say that uh, in future, uh, we uh, expect a lot from such type of uh, such caliber of people uh, that uh, they are providing a lot to pass for, for, for making some sort of efforts. Uh, the pass is doing professors association for student services. Uh, I hope this, this uh, collaboration would continue in future. Thank you very much. Thank you all. I must say thank you to uh, thank you so much to Dr. Richard uh, Gonzalez for investing his precious time and extraordinarily excellent talk. The participants for their active participation and Comsit Secretary uh, for their technical support. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. And goodbye. Goodbye. Assalamualaikum.